mentioned in his introduction, the goal of my research is to identify um, the genetic causes of inherited musculoskeletal disorders and to understand how the mutations cause the diseases so that we can go on and develop therapies. Today I'm going to tell you about how we discovered the gene for, a, for an inherited form of premature arthritis called familial digital arthropathy brachydactyly, or FDAB for short. And what that long and complicated name really means is that patients develop early osteoarthritis in their hands and feet, and as a consequence, their fingers and toes are shorter than normal. Now this was really a, a very exciting scientific journey for everyone involved and it also illustrates how our unique relationship with the VCGS clinicians is, is advancing our research and the importance of key clinical and scientific collaborations. So most of you will either have arthritis or you'll know someone who does. It's a really common disease that affects children as well as adults. It has a huge impact on quality of life for people with arthritis and it, and it also places a large burden on our healthcare budget. Now we chose to study an inherited form of this disease because, because often studying rare disorders gives us new insights into common disease mechanisms and it can suggest novel treatment approaches. So the search for the FDAB gene began about 10 years ago when our clinical collaborators at VCGS was David A. Moore, Matt Gardner and Ravi Savri Ryan identified and studied a Victorian family that had an inherited form of arthritis that affects the hands and feet. And following publication of that paper, we began to collaborate with clinicians from Germany and Canada who also had families with this same disorder who were interested in, in collaborating or interested in being part of our research so, and to help us find the gene that was causing their arthritis. So affected individuals appear normal at birth and it's usually in early childhood that you, they start to first develop signs of the disease and around between the ages of one and five years of age. And I think you can see on this slide that you can see changes already in the joints of this 12 year old. And these arthritic changes progress with age and by the mid 30s all the joints in the fingers and toes are profoundly affected. And I think you'll agree that these hands look much more like those of an 80 year old than they do of someone in their mid 30s. So we then used DNA from our Australian family which is shown on the left and the, and the German family in a linkage study. So this is the Australian family and we had 14 affected individuals in four generations and in the German family we had five affected individuals in three generations. Now a linkage study looks for DNA patterns in those with the disease that are not found in unaffected family members. And we use, and when, if we use two, uh, sorry, it can tell us um, which of our 23 chromosome pairs carries the disease gene and also whereabouts on the chromosome that gene is, is located. By using two families, which we did, we can in increase the power of this approach. And if the same region, chromosomal region, is implicated in both families, then we can be pretty sure that we're on the right track. Now this part of the research was supported by donor funds and it was part of Irma Greshoff's PhD work. So this image shows our 23 chromosome pairs and in this case the individual pairs are uh, shown in a different colour. And what Irma's work showed was that in both families the disease gene was located in a relatively small region on chromosome 12. Now this region contains about 80 genes and although Irma sequenced more than 20 of them during her PhD, we didn't find the disease gene at that time. Now not all of our 25,000 or so genes are switched on in all parts of our body. And in fact it's this pattern of genes being turned on and off that makes our different tissues unique. It's what makes cartilage different from skin and bone and muscle. And the breakthrough in finding the FDAB gene came when we analysed the data from another PhD student, Trevor Cameron. And what Trevor had done was he had used these microarrays to identify all the genes that were switched on in cartilage. Now because FDAB is a, is a form of arthritis, and it, it affects the cartilage that we at the end of our long bones. And so we would expect that the FDAB gene would be turned on in cartilage. So we looked at the genes, on, we looked at um, Trevor's microarrays, we looked at all the 80 genes in our disease region and what we found that there was really only one of them that was highly turned on in cartilage. 
And that was a gene called TRIPV4. So we sequenced TRIPV4 in our three families and we found mutations in all three. And this indicated that this is the gene responsible for their early arthritis. Now TRIPV4 is a member of a calcium channel family and it's found in the cell membrane at the surface of the cell where it regulates calcium entry into the cell and the concentration of intracellular calcium. So TRIPV4 is activated and lets calcium into the cell in response to moderate heat, um, in, to changes in the amount of salt, in the salt concentration around the cell, and also in response to mechanical stress or pressure on the cell. So that we then did some experiments to try and understand how the mutations affected the way the channel worked. And when we looked at the total amount of TRIPV4 protein that was inside the cell, we found that there was about the same amount of normal protein and mutant proteins. However, when we looked at the protein that was on the cell surface, which is where the channel needs to be to be active, we saw much less of the three mutant proteins compared to the normal. And so this told us that the mutations stop the channel getting to the cell surface efficiently. So we then went on to have a look at how the channels respond to changes in salt concentration around the cell or os osmotic pressure. Um, in cells that have normal TRIPV4, they respond to reduce salt in their environment by letting calcium into the cell. But the three mutant proteins aren't able to do this. And so the arthritis results from uh, TRIPV4 loss of function. Now, FTAB is a rare genetic disorder that, that begins in childhood, but arthritis is common. And we wondered if this calcium channel might be involved more broadly in arthritis. And so to do this, we used a mouse model of knee osteoarthritis that mimics the kind of arthritis that we get following an injury, such as rupture of a cruciate ligament. Now, what these microscopy photos show is cartilage stained in dark blue and the underlying bone in light blue. So in a normal knee, the cartilage is stained evenly with the dark blue, and you can see that the surface is smooth. However, in the knee with arthritis, you can see we lose the dark blue staining and the surface becomes damaged. So what we found was that TRIPV4 was turned down in this area of the cartilage where, that has arthritis. And in fact, the worse the damage, the more severe the arthritis, the more TRIPV4 was turned down. Now this is the first time that altered TRIPV4 activity has been associated with arthritis. And it suggested that modulating TRIPV4 activity may be a novel therapeutic approach for treating arthritis. And we were recently awarded an NH and MRC grant to continue this research. Now TRIPV4 is already of interest to drug companies because it's also turned on in nerves where it's responsible for chronic pain in conditions like cancer. And so we've begun to collaborate with a company in the UK who are looking for drugs that can modulate TRIPV4 activity. So many people, both here and overseas, contributed to this project and made it a success. And I would like to acknowledge and thank them all. So thank you.